everybody. This is Mandy with My Ever-Changing World. If you're new here, uh, stick around, see if you like it. If so, subscribe and come back. And if you're returning, thanks so much for coming back to me. Uh, I wanted to talk about anxiety a little bit today. Uh, so, I used to sleep well. I would hit the pillow and just, my husband would just laugh that I was out in seconds, literal seconds. Head would hit the pillow, he would take a couple deep breaths and I would already be asleep. Um, this was before I had kids. Before I had kids, I was tired, hit the pillow, fell asleep, no problem. Didn't have any problem sleeping at all whatsoever, fell asleep easily, slept all through the night, no problems at all. After having kids, pretty much instantly, after I had kid number one, I couldn't fall asleep anymore. There was so much stuff going on in my head and responsibilities and the, the duties and the chores and the worries and just just all the things and my head just wouldn't stop and I couldn't shut it down to go to sleep. So I started watching TV to fall asleep and we don't have a TV in our bedroom. We we're very anti-TV in our bedroom. And so I just you know put in a little earbud, watch something on my phone, prop my phone up next to the bed and then just fall asleep as I'm watching something. And sometimes I fall asleep very quickly. I'll put on something intentionally, you know, a movie that I've seen 7,000 times, um, and I'll watch the first three and a half minutes and I fall asleep. Um, or sometimes I'm not quite tired yet because we go to bed pretty early because he wakes up pretty early. Um, and I'll watch a few episodes of something current and then I'll turn on something boring that I'll fall right asleep to. Um, but yeah, I just I did, didn't, can't still, can't turn off my brain. Another thing that, um, I started doing after having kids is worrying a lot. Um, just kind of all the time during the day about everything. Even when I was pregnant, I would talk to my mom and she would say something about some milestone or some, you know, marker in the pregnancy and I would say, yeah, but that doesn't mean, you know, necessarily that everything's going to go well. Like it could, yes, I'm at whatever, 13 weeks but I'm still, you know, the baby's not here yet. Or I would say something about, you know, I had a, um, the genetic screening and I would say, you know, that so far it looks like the results are good, but baby's not here yet. So we'll see. And my mom would always like, why are you being so negative? Why are you worried so much? Why are you, you know, of course, like, of course it's just da 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 da. And I would say, I'm not being negative. I'm just being realistic. Like I know lots of people who have lost babies late term. I know lots of people who have babies, um, have had babies with issues. I'm not taking it for granted that I'm just gonna get pregnant. I've had a miscarriage myself. I'm not taking it for granted that because I'm pregnant, it's gonna end up in a healthy, happy baby. Like I just, I know that that's not always the case. And so I was just kind of being realistic. And until I delivered the baby and had everything checked and realized that it was healthy and happy, um, I just sort of, you know, was braced for the fact that it might not be. Um, and then after, you know, the kids are growing up, they're running around, they're doing whatever, then there pops in all the crazy stuff, you know, not crazy stuff, but all the other stuff. Um, you know, they're at the park, somebody's going to kidnap them, they're outside the house, do I need to watch them every second because somebody's going to steal them? Um, you know, just that sort of a thing. And I read a book. Um, called The Gift of Fear, and it was really helpful. It kind of like put into perspective the things that do go wrong and the th and how often that happens, but also it was a way to, it's um, reinforcing your natural instincts. So when you as a person sense that something is off, usually something is off, sometimes we ignore that, uh, and we shouldn't, we should pay really close attention to that. But that gut instinct, that feeling that you have in your stomach that says something's not right, usually means something's not right. Um, and so it was sort of a, it was both empowering and also calming. And it's a pretty short book, I definitely recommend it. It's called The Gift of Fear. So that helped me to relax a little bit, but then I still had this like, just nagging, um, uncomfortable, just feeling in my stomach all the time. Every single minute of every single day, just this like uncomfortable, worried feeling in my stomach. And so I read up on piercings and 
read about uh, the one that you can get the um, the dace piercing that you can get for migraines, um, and also you can get a different piercing uh, called a rook, which sometimes helps for with anxiety. And so I looked into it and was really excited about it, and figured we'll try it because I don't have anxiety where I have panic attacks or it's debilitating or it's really problematic, but I just have this worried sense feeling all the time and we just prefer not to. So I figured worst case scenario, it doesn't work. Best case scenario, it's great. So it's called a rook and it's um, up in your cartilage, sort of like for me, it's tucked underneath uh, sort of the front flap in your ear. And so mine is small, you can't even see it. If you're looking at me head on, you really can't see it if you're looking at me from the side. Um, if you're really looking for it, you can see it, but really it's, it's very, it's hardly noticeable. So I went, I found a, a really good um, tattoo shop that does piercings, that had really good reviews, went, and wanted it done and I told her what I wanted done and why and she immediately said I can't guarantee that this is going to help your anxiety I I have no no assurance that it's going to do any of that I'll have I'll happily give you an earring where you want it but it doesn't I'm not saying that it has anything to do with anxiety or that it's going to help you in any way shape or form and I said that's fine and let me tell you what it hurt it hurt a lot. It was really painful. Uh, but then it was done. Um, the way, if you don't know anything about um, cartilage piercings or piercings that you get at a tattoo shop um, or a piercing salon or somewhere besides, you know, the piercing pagoda in the mall where they just have the little earring and a gun and you just clink and you're done. Um, what they do is they have a, a very long, hollow needle. And so as they put the needle in, it removes the skin and then they, they uh, thread the earring through the back of that hollow needle. So they pierce the ear and then as it's in, they thread the earring through and then they pull the needle all the way out and then the earring is all the way in. Um, but when it's small, and they have to clip it together or they have to screw the ball on or whatever. There's some wiggling and some finagling that has to happen after it's just been pierced. And so the, the piercing itself hurts really badly. Um, but then after that, when they put the earring in and they're kind of like fiddling with it, it does not feel great. But it wasn't the end of the world. I didn't cry. I didn't scream. Uh, I was by myself. And it did just hurt a lot. It was not comfortable and hurt a lot for probably an actual, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. It's not like it's minutes and minutes and minutes of excruciating pain. Uh, it's as long as it takes to push a needle through a piece of cartilage, get the cartilage out, chase it with a earring, and then button it up. So not that long. But it was very painful. I'm not gonna pull any punches. I'm telling you, it was very painful. However, instantly, legitimately, literally, instantly, that feeling in the pit of my stomach was gone. Before I even got off the table, I laid there for a second and I wanted to see how I felt, and it was gone. And that was enough for me. So I did have some trouble with um, keeping it clean uh, because I didn't understand the, the instructions uh, at the beginning. And so I had to <clears throat> have the original earring um, changed. Originally it wasn't a, um, a hoop. Originally it was a curved barbell. So it's kind of, you know, it looks like this and it has a, a ball on this side and a ball on this side and it kind of, you know, does this. Um, so what they, they re reason they do that usually is because your ear will swell and um, they want to have enough room that um, you know can move without it being you know super you know a hoop is going to be more like this and so it's going to be tighter and harder to wiggle but if it's more like this then it's easier to kind of stretch out so i didn't clean it well and it was bothering me i sleep on my on my side 
And so every now and then I would, I would sleep on my left side for months and months and months. Um, but every now and then I would turn on my right side because you do things in your sleep that you don't know sometimes. And I would wake up and it would be really sore. Um, so anyway, so I went in at some point and they said, oh, well, there's actually not healing well. Um, let's change it to something that's longer, I think. Yeah, it was a hoop, but it was a wider, a bigger hoop. And then um, that still wasn't healing very well. So then I went back a little while later and it turned out that I have an, um, not an allergy, a uh, sensitivity to the metal. So we switched and went to a very small, the smallest probably that you can get, a very small hoop that's made of titanium. And ever since then, no problems at all. It doesn't hurt. Um, it's not goopy or crusty or, nas or nasty in any way. Um, and it's been two and a half years maybe. And I have only had that anxiety, pit of your stomach, uncomfortable feeling maybe twice in that whole two and a half years. And both of those were warranted. It was something that had kind of it was a big enough deal that it had, uh, you know, exceeded the the baseline threshold of you know what the earring could handle, and it was legitimate. And I was legitimately worried, and I was anxious for a reason, and I was concerned, really concerned for my family. And then, as soon as that dissipated, the feeling left. I mean, you know, I was upset. My my stomach was angry for maybe half a day, um, and that was it. So that's happened twice in two and a half years, and ever every other minute of every single day, absolutely, stomach feels fine, no issues at all. Highly, highly, highly recommend getting a piercing if you have any kind of anxiety. So that is what I have to say about that. If you have any questions uh, or I can help at all, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. I uh, hope you found this helpful. Again, that book is The Gift of Fear. Um, I was going to tell you the author, but I can't remember it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you found it beneficial. And uh, see you on the next one. Have a good day. Bye.